so guys here examination is very much important and just to make a slide and uh, just observe that slide under microscope is uh, necessary this is the study of hair is non astrichology and hair basically why the hair are important because they resist putrefaction hair resist putrefaction for long time so that's why they can be or they may be preserved and they may be checked or analyzed and can be used as a potential evidence in various crimes and they can even uh, recovered from graves after long time so that's why because uh, uh, they resist putrefaction now one question that whether here grows after death or not after death is there is any any growth in the hair or not so the answer is no answer is no there is no growth yeah obviously there is uh, apparent growth in hair that apparent growth in hair is due to skin shrinkage because skin shrinkage so this is apparent growth so there is no growth in the hair after death so how to differentiate between hair and vegetable fibers so vegetable fibers basically uh, burnt without any disagreeable odor so there is no odor in vegetable fibers and after burning these ends their their ends will be sharply burnt sharply burnt ends of these vegetable fibers now here basically on burning hair they emits uh, odor and their end ends will be bead like so their ends will be bead like and there is any uh, a disagreeable odor in on on burning these hairs now about animal hair so on burning these animal hairs their end will be bead like and one important feature to differentiate them from human hair is that the human hair are curled on burning and they shriveled and distorted and twisted twisted and distorted on burning so the bead like end will be there and the animal hair basically uh, burnt with a bead like end and human hairs will be curled shriveled and twisted and distorted on burning so these are some important feature although these are not that uh, confirmatory to differentiate we will uh, we have to go for various chemical tests as well as for microscopic examinations to differentiate hair from these fibers now uh, this uh, the various types of uh, are there like uh, depending on the part of the body and depending on the species we can differentiate now the basically human hair is having three layers three layers so the outermost layer is known as cuticle this layer is known as cuticle it is basically thin this layer is thin and it's not pigmented non pigmented thin non pigmented layer it's having various scales and the middle layer middle layer uh, middle layer this is the cuticle now this is the middle layer this is known as cortex cortex so this cortex is having uh, basically it forms the thickness thick and the main bulk of the hair is formed by this cortex that is middle layer and why hair emits that disagreeable odor because this layer 
contains abundance of keratin so due to burning of this keratin there is that disagreeable odor in hair now the innermost layer this is the innermost layer this is the medulla so innermost layer is medulla now is this this layer is basically narrow in human and it is broad in animal so it is broad in animals and it is narrow in human now something is known as medullary index so what is medullary index medullary index is the diameter of medulla divided by diameter of whole shaft of hair so diameter of this medulla divided by diameter of whole shaft is known as medullary index now we just have discussed that diameter of uh, this medulla is narrowed in human so that's why this medullary index is less than 0.3 in human and the the highest medullary index highest medullary index uh, is of the hair of beard so these hair uh, are having highest medullary index because of some some uh, more size of this medulla now animal hair are having medullary index more than 0.5 because of the medulla is broad in animals now the basic difference between the animal and human hair so animal hair are basically thick these hair are thick and coarse while the human hair are thin and fine now this cuticle scales these cuticle scales are thin short in human they are thin and short in human well these are very large these are very uh, large and polyhedral polyhedral in animals now the cortex is thick cortex is thick the cortex is thin in animals now the medulla is narrow and it is non continuous the medulla is non continuous and fragmented fragmented medulla the medulla in animal hair is continuous and broad so this is basic difference between human and animal hairs now the important feature between the um, human and animal hair and the uh, basically the different kind of aging processes and uh, different kind of uh, this uh, the the overall the chemical reactions and applying of dye may change the basic characteristics of hair so if hair basically uh, fallen naturally so any hair fallen naturally then the root will be distorted root will be distorted and shrunken or atrophied so on natural hair pod this root will be uh, distorted like this or shrunken or atrophied but if on forcible extraction forcible extraction there is rupture of sheath the sheath will be ruptured rupture of sheath like this the this this sheath of hair will be ruptured like this it will be ruptured so there is rupture of sheath will be seen in case of uh, forcible extraction now normally the frayed end of hair is may be seen in case of uh, repeated injuries so if there is repeated injuries then this end of the hair uh, like this will be frayed so frayed ends will be seen in case of repeated injuries so these are very 
characteristic features may be seen in case of various kind of um, uh, uh, like in case of natural fall or forcible extraction or can, uh, kind of repeated injuries now poisoning and hair hair can retain various heavy metals like arsenic can uh, retain in hair for long time and they can also retain mercury they can also retain lead they can also retain this copper and all so because of their deposition in hair uh, they can be detected up even after long time now hair bulb can be used for detection of dna analysis so dna analysis is uh, also required for the purpose of identification identification one more important feature is the sex determination can be done sex chromatin sex chromatin by using fluorescent in situ hybridization technique uh, here can be used for sex determination because the sex chromatin this sex chromatin is seen in 70 percent female uh, females and 7 percent males it can be seen and it, it can be done by using this fluorescent in situ hybridization technique by sex chromatin for differentiation of x as well as the y chromosomes so sex chromatin can be used for determination of sex now the hair are medically legally very important for solving various uh, related crimes so like in case of rape or sodomy hair can be cross examined or cross checked with the uh, crime scene now matted pubic hairs matted pubic hairs may be seen matted pubic hairs may be seen they, they are matted with the seminal fluid or any other any other body discharge so it is very much important now the clothes or any other articles may have this uh, hair and can be used as a trace evidence and potential evidence now the salivary stains may be seen on the hair salivary stains may be present may be examined for dna as well as other uh, examination now one important feature is the singeing of hair can be seen in case of burns can be seen in case of gunshots now if there is sudden sudden and at the peak of emotions then in that kind of death cadaveric spasm may be seen it is involuntary uh, sudden instantaneous rigor of a group of muscle and there may be hair tuft may be found in the hand or any other uh, bodily part of uh, the deceased so these are the some important features or important findings we can cross check for the med solving any med medical legal case so guys hair examination is very much important and just to make a slide and uh, just observe that slide under microscope is uh, necessary so these are the equipments we need for hair examination just clean the slide properly to remove the wax and uh, just check just duly check that there will not be any any wax so this is cleaned up slide then we will take a hair from the 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 bunch of hair just to examine that hair under microscope we'll put that hair on a glass slide in this way like we have done now we uh, put some drop of distilled water on this glass slide like uh, you are observing now we'll put a cover slip just like this and after putting the cover slip you should uh, be careful uh, as the cover slip may displace and there may be uh, there are chances of uh, this uh, disruption and and any any kind of uh, this uh, uh, breakage or uh, anything such so just now we'll observe the uh, slide under microscope 
So after focusing and observing the slide under microscope, we'll be able to see the uh, the different uh, parts of the hair like we have discussed, like cuticle, cortex, medulla, and uh, any 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 deformity or any features, specific features of medulla or any characteristic features in the cuticle. There may be any fraying or any kind of root necrosis and so. so. So this is the hair which is having this medulla, this is cortex and the, uh, the outermost layer is cuticle. So this is the simplest method of to analyze hairs collected from the crime scene and etc. So thank you so much and please do subscribe Forensic Extract. Thank you.